I want you to see uh, what Anand Nirad Hiradas had to say because Hirad Hararas, I think is his name, because he believes in the same principles that I believe in. The same principles that I don't say, oh, Mike Csak, you are just a troll. Or, oh, Eric Hayes, you just don't get it. I uh, trust that I eventually will get to you by keeping the door open as I've always kept the door open for you all. I want you to listen to this piece here because I think it's a very important piece and then we'll take it on the other side. Check this out. We'll take it on the other side. We're, we're in two different worlds. We're talking past them. Why? It's incredibly important to call out and talk about on this show and in your life everything you just mentioned, right? It would be irresponsible not to. It's, it, it's been a lot of progress in the media to get folks to call these things what they are. And yet, we risk living in perpetual reaction to these outrages and forgetting to do the second thing, the chewing gum along with the walking, that is offering people a thrilling, galvanizing, uh, magnanimous vision of the future that is more exciting than what the other side is offering. The scary thing right now is that the people who want to end liberal democracy as we know it in America and who, who don't want to include, who would rather break the republic than share it, they are offering a vision that reads to many Americans as more welcoming and more inviting and more fun, frankly. And the people who are on the pro-democracy side trying to build a better movement are failing at that. And so I set out to learn from people People who show a different way. And they say there's a bunch of things we need to do that can move some of those friends. We need to command attention much more effectively on the pro-democracy side in the way that the right is very good at. We need to, for some of your friends and lawyer friends and others, do a better job at making meaning of these things that are happening and, and, and actually understanding their intuitions, having empathy for what they value and explaining to them empathetically and, and with care, not contempt, why it is that what's happening to the country violates what they believe, not just what we believe. Uh, I think we need to meet people where they are, particularly on this issue of gas, inflation, crime. There is a tendency in the Democratic Party to say, no, 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 the thing you're telling us you are worried about is not in fact something you should be worried about. You have false consciousness in this worry. You should in fact be worried about this thing I got over here that's far more important. If you've met a real person, you know it doesn't work. In fact, Democrats have a whole policy agenda that relates to those concerns people have and have a theory, but it, 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 there's this total failure to actually meet people where they are. There is a problem President Obama was referring to of a movement that feels inaccessible to people, feels standoffish, feels like a nightclub that's hard to join. Uh, a lot of that's ginned up, some of that's real. That has to that has to stop. So I, I spent time in all kinds of actual spaces outside of the national political scene for the persuaders where this is actually happening, where we're not having the most inflammatory version of these conversations that, that exists on other channels, where we are having generative conversations, where Americans are finding common ground, where we're talking about race in ways that actually pull people in rather than alienate people, where we're talking about how you have a more fair economy with opportunity for all without scaring people. Uh, and, I, and I really believe Eve, in part because I refuse to give up on this country, that there is a way forward for American democracy, but it is going to take building a pro-democracy movement, a freedom movement that is unlike any movement we have ever seen. And I believe these persuaders I wrote about show a way to do it. So because of the optimism you just mentioned, this is a hopeful book. It yes, is. This is a dark topic, but it's a hopeful book. And you're effectively saying to people, stop doom scrolling, stop hiding between underneath your blanket, hoping Donald Trump goes to jail and get up and do something. So what what gives you hope? Why are you hopeful in this book? I went to Arizona for the final chapter of the book to witness something called deep canvassing. And I'm choosing to spotlight this because actually everybody listening to this can go sign up to become a deep canvasser themselves. These are regular people around the country who've gotten a few hours of training online to go door to door and talk to their neighbors about issues. And this is not the political canvassing you're familiar with where it's one minute on the door. This is 30 to 40 minutes on the door if you can keep the door open. And usually they do keep the door open that long. And what they are doing in Arizona and elsewhere is talking talking about the hardest issues facing us, immigration, race, LGBT rights, so on and so forth. And they go to these doors and they basically behave the opposite 
of the way most of us believe in, behave in the culture now. They don't call out, they don't condemn, they don't dunk. They sit there and they listen with respect. They don't lie about where they stand. They're honest about the fact that they're in this fight because they believe in dignity for whatever group is in question, but they listen. They elicit prejudices, they elicit views, and then they start doing the second thing that makes deep canvassing work. They look for sources of dissonance. Sure, you say that about immigrants, but do you know any immigrants? Yeah, I do. Do the immigrants you know, do they square with what you just said a minute ago? And a lot of times people realize, no, my gardener is actually the hardest working person I know. I don't know why I just said those people are lazy. Uh, or have you ever been shut out and marginalized and scorned because of factors about you you couldn't control? And people will say, yeah, I guess that is the same as what I'm doing to trans people in this country. This movement of deep canvassing is one of many that I profile in the book where there is real progress being made in changing minds in a polarized time. Not the hardcore 10, 15 percent of Americans who may well be immovable on these issues, but a lot of people besides who, who are movable, who research is showing are movable. And I spent time with them because I was despairing and I was convinced uh, that, you know, you can just kind of pray for indictments, pray for Bob Mueller, pray for Merrick Garland, all, all these kinds of detours when we actually know what has the only thing that has ever actually changed anything in this country, which is more people coming together and wanting the other thing. And we need to summon, as we have never summoned before in this country, a passion for democracy. People cannot just be voting for the pro-democracy movement because it's less bad than the other side, because it's less crazy. Uh, it needs to build a transcendent movement, a movement of belonging and connection that people want to scream about from the rooftops. And I believe it can. We spend uh, a lot. Absolutely so. And, and, and that's where I've been for quite a long time now. In fact, uh, I believe that we are in this together, whether some of us like it or not. Uh, we are our brothers and sisters keepers, whether each of us like it or not. And the one villain is the one splitting us apart. Understanding that, whether either of us want to accept it or not. And one of the reasons I keep the modus operandi that I keep is because I understand that if I, if I succumb, if I as a, as a person, as one person, succumb to hating those who hate on me, to disparaging uh, uh, evilly a Mike Cisak, a Eric Hayes, a, 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 a Michael Lado, and all the other conservatives that comes here. I would have given victory to the plutocracy who needs us at each other's neck. I won't have that. They are my brothers. Whether they like it or not, we are in the same boat whether they like it or not. And so therefore, you know, they can tell me anything. You can say anything. You can do anything. You can whatever anything. I am going to try to reach folks. And I want to give an example. I'm, I, 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 in my book, it's worth it. How to talk to your right-wing relatives, friends, and neighbors. The right wing is one thing, right? But it could be how do I talk to a, 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 a DSA member that doesn't completely agree with my point of view of, of talking to the other side. How uh, it's 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 the same uh, it's the same process, right? In my book, I wrote a chapter called "Explaining Medicare for All," and you notice Anan Hirad Hirada said, "Go to where people are, not telling them what they don't see." There's this woman I met. I want to read this, the, the chapter in the book because it's important and I think it, it lends itself. And, and, and I, I want to get this because I want people to see those newcomers on YouTube and elsewhere to understand where we're coming from. I said, it, the, the title of, my, of the chapter in this book, it's worth it, how to uh, talk to your right-wing relatives, friends, and neighbors. I said, I was sitting in one of my favorite coffee shops before the pandemic. I just, I, I, I just about lived in there till one o'clock. I would then go to my home studio to do the Politics Done Right show. I would return to the coffee shop many times again in the late afternoons on the specific day a woman came and sat next to me. I see you here all the time, she said, sort of soliciting an informative reply. I told her I was a national blogger 
and radio media show host and loved the environment. I get a lot of blog ideas from a myriad of people I meet there. Many have become subjects in my blogs or shows, anonymous most of the times, of course. We start talking about healthcare. I do not remember how we got there, but we both agreed that the health insurance system was a mess. The woman thought she hated Obamacare, even though she was on a particular good employer-based insurance plan. I have spoken to many people about health care. It is one of my most important topics of conversation. I ask many questions. What about her insurance did she not like? I got the standard response. The premium was too high. The deductibles were too high. The co-pays were a nuisance. She hated having to go through the ringer to see a specialist. And she hated having to self select alternatives drugs because the insurance company only allowed a specific one. The woman hated that she had to constantly check to see if a specific doctor was on her plan. I told my new friend that my wife had lupus and because she had a pre-existing condition that it has been hard to get insurance and as a self-employed business owner, the yearly increases were terrible. I did not yet tell the woman that we were on Obamacare and the value compared to how things were before was orders of magnitude better. I did not want to do anything to change the flow of the discourse. I pointed out her plan was no different than Obamacare. Really? She asked sort of in shock. At this point, because I was so attentive as I listened, again, as I listened without offering any opinions, the woman likely took me took my response not as one favoring Obamacare, but just stating a fact. I am sure she thought I was one of the few black Republicans in the community. I asked her what she thought like in a, what she what she would like in a plan. She wanted no deductible small copay, the ability to select the doctor of her choice and the drug of her doctor's choice. In effect, she wanted to escape the chains of the insurance company. I told her she was describing the concept for Medicare for all. She gave me a confused look. And I also pointed out that the that like Obamacare insurance companies could not rescind the policy and place caps on how much they were willing to pay for her care. At this point, it was clear that she was having a mental conversation. I felt guilty because I am sure that with all the talking I was doing, mostly by having her answer her own questions and having her tweak her answers with further questions for answers requiring clarification, she was sure that I was just an analytical Republican. The most important question had to do with an option to choose. She said she did not want socialized health care, health insurance, because she wanted the freedom to choose health insurance companies that best fulfill her needs. I asked her what happens if her needs change in the middle of the year. She had a blank look. It was time for me to come clean because it was time to go a bit deeper. Ma'am, I think I need to tell you something, I said. I am progressive, liberal, a real lefty. The woman turned cherry red in her face. She could not speak for a few seconds. The piercing stare eye to eye seemed like an eternity. The woman then blurted out, But you are so nice. I could not help but laugh out loud. I told her the caricature she has she sees portrayed in right-wing media is just that, a caricature. I told her she should come and have lunch with our local liberal ladies who lunch. I wanted to continue the conversation, and she did too. I asked her to please tell me which system gives her the most freedom. Is the one that you have to shop around for a yearly basis, which comes the closest to her needs freer than the one where you go to the doctor of your choice who can prescribe the medicine or procedure they deem more fit? Of course, she picked the latter, which was Medicare for All. By then, she had already convinced herself that Medicare for All was the best choice. But while intellectually she could have made the leap, ideologically, had her ideology had her sit, stayed in uh, what was a fact to her that will still cost too much and all our insurance would go up i asked her about how much she thought her premium would go up she said 10 to 20 percent i asked her if she would give someone 200 dollars to pay a 160 dollar bill she said that made no sense isn't that what insurance companies do i asked she agreed 
But don't they have to put away for the rainy day, she asked. That was her way to talk about managing risk. If there was only one entity paying the bill, wouldn't all the costs get spread across millions of people, I asked. After the conversation, it was clear the seed was planted, fertilized, and sprouting. She had proven to herself that single-payer Medicare for All was the best answer. I am sure her husband will have her second guess in herself, but I'm confident that the tenor of our discourse made her feel empowered as she should. My friend may not become a healthcare activist with her husband to keep the peace, but I am sure she will never look at health insurance the same again. It was clear she saw the utter lack of logic of private insurance as the method of paying for one's healthcare. I mean, I repeat that story over and over again because the look in that woman's face as she was coming to the conclusion that how could I have believed the crap that I believed for so long? And you could see it falling out of this lady. I mean, I I want, you know, you could see also she wanted to hug me at the end of the day. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.